Hi, Ren. It's episode 108 of the podcast. What do you know about time? Hmm. You know what time it is? Time for episode 108 of Trivia for Kids, the podcast. 12.35 p.m. (laughs) This is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. So, Ren, round one is colorful animals. Hmm. Question one, which reptile is famous for its colorful iridescent scales, the ability to camouflage, and is often kept as a pet? Um, a chameleon? Chameleon is the answer. And chameleon's eyes can move independently of each other. Like how our eyes move, you oh, know, they can like... if we're looking left, both eyes look left or right or whatever, but a chameleon, he can just wiggle those eyes all around. Is the... Is the um the secretary lady on the movie Sing who uh, whose eye always pops out? Is Miss she Crowley? a Crowley? Ca- Miss Crowley is she a chameleon? Yeah, that's what it reminds me of when her eye just pops out and rolls. All right, question two: Which tropical bird species is known for its long, colorful, curved bill and is often associated with Fruit Loops and tropical climates? Toucan. A toucan is the. Have, Toucans are one of the coolest birds I've ever seen. Yeah. They are you, so cool. You said the two most colorful animals that I thought. Oh, well, it's a good thing that they're, we're in the colorful animal category. <laughs> yeah. What is the toucan's name in Fruit Loops? Do you know? Um, I think it's like, I, I don't remember. It's like. Toucan Sam is his name. Oh, that's right. Follow yeah. your nose or something. Something like that. Question three. What is the name of the small fish often kept in aquariums? Known for its bright orange coloration. Koi? Oh, that's not a bad guess. I'd give you koi. I was going for goldfish. Oh. But koi is bright orange too, so some koi. Some koi are spotty and black and white and whatever, but yeah. And there's probably other fish that are kept in aquariums that are orange. Yeah, I have but one. But I'm going for a goldfish. Your fish is not orange. He has an orange tail. But he's not orange. Orange and black tail. He's a... Ren has a guppy. What's his name? Cody? Cody. Like after Dude Perfect. So she had a whole bunch of guppies and they were all after Dude Perfect guys. Cody ate all of them. Cody killed them all. So Cody is her last guppy standing and all the rest of them like, what are the rest of the Dude Perfect guys' names? I don't even know. Um, like Ty, Corey, uh... All of them. She had them all named and Cody killed them all. Question four, which insect is known for its metallic blue or green coloration and loud buzzing sound? Cicada? It is a cicada. And we were just talking about this over lunch. Apparently this summer, there's going to be the biggest cicada like population ever because both types of cicadas are going to be around, or I don't know, something, but around us, it's going to be like cicada heaven for some reason. So I don't know. I think they're cool. They They're the sound of summer in my mind. Question five. What type of animal is a mandrel? One of the most colorful mammals in the world with red and blue skin on its face and backside. I don't know. It's a primate or a monkey. So you know those monkeys that have like bright blue butts? And they have like a blue kind of like, it's almost like a mask that comes down. But mandrels are monkeys or primates. Question six, what small amphibian is known for its vibrant and diverse colors, often a sign of being toxic? Poison? Poison. Dart frog. Dart frog is the answer. So we just, remember we just recently saw poison dart yeah, frogs. There was and a what did you say? Yeah, black one and a blue and black one. And I was like, mom, can I have a frog? And you said, can I have one of these as a pet? No, I said, can I have a frog? Oh, I thought you wanted one of those. And I was like, well, it could probably kill you. So no, you cannot have a poison dart frog. They are so cute though. They're, yeah. They are so colorful and like shiny. They almost look fake. Like yeah. they're, they're very non-realistic looking live animals. So question seven, what small bird is known for its bright, colorful feathers and ability to hover in midair while feeding? Hummingbird. It is a hummingbird, and they can be so many different colors. They are beautiful. I wish they were slower so that you could get a better look at how pretty they are. But they're so fast that they just doop, 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 doop around, and it's hard to see them. 
Did you know that hummingbirds are the only type of bird that can fly backwards? I did know that. That is a great trivia. We've had that one on trivia before. That's a great question, but thank you for the information. All right, Ren, this is round two. The category is toys and games. Question one, what is the name of the most powerful piece on a chessboard? The queen. The queen is the answer. And why is she the most powerful? Because she can move whichever space she wants. Right, because all the other characters or all the other pieces only have specific ways they can move, but the queen, she but can do it all. She's the king of the chessboard, even though she's not the king. She's the queen, but anyway. Question two, which Lego toy series is made specifically for children under the age of five? Lego World. I mean, like fre Lego Friends or something. Lego Duplo is the answer. Oh, those. Yeah, the Duplos are like a little bigger pieces. A little bigger. The, yeah, for the littler <laughs> kids. Question three, if someone told you they were playing the video game A-C-N-H, what game are they playing? National League of Air Hockey. Good guess. <laughs> the answer is Animal Crossing New Horizon. Oh. I, we don't have Animal Crossing on Switch, but I, I was looking it up when I was writing this well, question. you kind of do have an Animal Crossing on Mario Kart. There's one that's called Animal Crossing. Yeah, but it's not the actual game. But it looks really fun. I think you guys sh should ask for that for your next birthdays. Well, I was going to ask for a lizard. Oh. <laughs> All right. Question four. What is the name of the classic board game where players buy, sell, and trade properties to become the wealthiest? Monopoly. Monopoly is the answer. Or the game of life. That would kind of work, too. Oh. Well, you don't you don't trade and sell properties in life like you yeah. can in Monopoly, but I see what you're saying. You could say life too, but we've you've probably never played real Monopoly. We have Monopoly Junior, but we don't have real adult Monopoly or like I don't want to play real original. Monopoly. Takes forever. That's why we don't have it. I don't have the patience or brain power to play that long. Question five. What classic children's card game requires players to match cards? Based on their number or color. I was going to say go fish at first and then you said color. Then it'd be Uno. Uno is the answer. And Ren loves to try to be the first one to say Uno before the Uno person. Yeah, like you're very, you're a very competitive Uno player. Mm -hmm. Yes. Question six. What is the name of the classic toy consisting of a plastic disc that is thrown and caught often in outdoor play? Frisbee. Frisbee is the answer. That is correct. Question seven. What is the name of the classic toy consisting of a ball attached to a paddle by an elastic string, which players try to bounce continuously without stopping? What's that called? Um, like paddle ball. Paddle ball! I never understood paddle ball. I was never any good at it. And were you just like, Hit, 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 hit. And that one game where, like, you where you have to try and get that ball, like, on top of the, like, the little two. In the basket or whatever. Yeah, in yeah. the like, it has a string, and you have to, like, try and make it on to right. the thing. That sounds hard, too. But think about back, you know, before they had all these fancy toys, and that was kind of your toy option, was that paddle ball on an elastic string, and you just had to sit there and, you kids, you kids these days are so lucky. All right, Ren, category number three is time. It's time for round three. It's also 12.49. It, thank you. Question one, how many seconds are there in a minute? 60. 60 is the answer. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60. How many hours are there in a day? 24. How many days are there in a year? 364. Five or four, it depends on if it's a leap year. Nope, it's 365. You okay. were right. Good job. Question two. What is the time of day when the sun is at its highest point in the sky? 12 a.m. So No, oh, solar, <laughs> solar noon or 12 p.m. is correct. I didn't realize it was called solar noon. 
Like, I always got really confused because you can't really tell if it's 12 a.m. or p.m. Like a.m. is in the middle of the night or morning. Question three. What is the name of the timepiece that uses sand to measure time? Hourglass. It is an hourglass. It can also be called a sand clock, but hourglass is the answer. Good job. Question four. What is the name of the famous giant clock in London? Big Ben. Big Ben. That is right. Big Ben. Big Ben. Question five. What type of watch has buttons, which you press at the beginning and end of an event so that you can measure exactly how long it takes? Stopwatch. Stopwatch is the answer. When do you think of a stopwatch? When do you use it? Uh, racing. Like a race. Yep. Like start it and stop it when they're done. Correct. Question six. In the television show Bubble Guppies, each episode they sing a song that says, what time is it? It's, it's time, time for lunch. Time is it? You didn't it's even let me finish lunch. the question. It's lunch time. Hey, what time is it? It's time for lunch. lunch. It's lunch time. Hey, what's for lunch? lunch? Question seven. How many days are there in a leap year? 366. 366 is the correct answer. Very good. You did good at time. Good job. And now we are starting our new part of the podcast called A Break with Brooks. Brooks, tell us anything you want to tell us today. What is your, I have a question. What is your favorite thing to say when you're playing with friends or wrestling or like really excited about something? What do you always say? It's a guy's name. It's a wrestler's name, and you say it all the time. Yeah. Are you embarrassed? Tell him what you say. John Cena. John Cena. So when Brooks wrestles and he gets excited about something, he says, John Cena. And what else do you say sometimes? Sue. Cristiano Ronaldo. Sue. Why do you guys say Cristiano Ronaldo Sue? I don't I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Does Cristiano Ronaldo say Sue? And then you guys do like a Yeah. He does say that. I, I don't watch I don't watch a lot of Portugal soccer, so I don't know. Can you tell us what you want to be when you grow up? An astronaut. Astronaut? What do you always tell me you want to be? A football player. A football player. But you are you need to do what first? Grow. grow, right? Do you eat enough food to grow, do you think? No. No? You are not a great eater, are you? What is your favorite food? Can it be like a fruit? Yeah. Um, a pear. Pears? That's a great favorite food. Is there anything else you want to say? Anything at all? Um, John Cena, Cristiano Ronaldo, Sue, give him like a big yell of some sort of something. Yeah. Yeah. Yell? That's what you want to say? Hey, thanks for break with Brooks. Do you want to go play? Yeah. Yeah? What are you going to go play? Boosh, um, knockout. Knockout. Oh, you're going to go play basketball. All right. No, see I you, dude. Knockout. Yeah. All right. See you, dude. Thanks, thanks. for thanks for breaking. Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. All right, Ren, round four is weird laws. This will be a fun one. Question one. In Oklahoma or Ohio, you can't make faces at what kind of common animal? A dog. A dog is correct. You can't make faces at a dog. What if it's a nice face? What if you're like, oh, come here, puppy. Oh, come here. What if you're like, then you well, can get arrested. Well, every single face is a face, like. That's true, don't make it out of dog. The cops will find you. Question two, in what West Coast state is it illegal to eat a frog if it died during a frog jumping competition? California. California is the correct answer. Frog jumping is super popular in California with the biggest competition being held annually in Calaveras County. But if one of the frogs dies at any point in the competition, its body must be destroyed as soon as possible and may not be eaten or otherwise used for any purpose. 
I don't know if people were just like cooking up frog legs at one time after the competition, you know, like old Hoppy Hopper died. And then somebody was like, I'm going to eat Hoppy. And then the person whose frog it was, was sad. I don't know how that worked, but it's a law. Don't eat frogs in California if they died after the competition. (laughs) Question three. I hope you are not planning to do karaoke on the beach because in Florida, it's illegal to do what in your swimsuit? Dance. Sing. I was singing in Florida in my swimsuit on the pool. Well, that's not on the beach. Karaoke. You don't dance in karaoke. I guess you could while you were singing. Won't you hang from the chandelier? (laughs) Did you catch Ren giving me a nudge to stop my coolness there? (laughs) Question four. In Kansas, it is illegal to serve ice cream on what flavor of pie? Pumpkin. The answer is cherry. I feel like cherry pie needs a little help. I know I'm not a big cherry pie fan, but whipped cream's fine. Just don't serve ice cream on it, apparently. A la mode is not allowed for cherry pie. Question five. Thank goodness that in Alabama, it is illegal to do what if you are blindfolded? Kill someone. Whoa. The answer is drive a car. Well, that makes sense. It's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, you'd think that that would be a general law everywhere, but specifically in uh, Alabama, don't drive a car with a blindfold on. In Iowa, it's fine. You just do it. Whatever. It's not illegal, apparently. No, that's a joke. I'm sure it is. Question six. In Georgia, it's illegal to tie what type of animal to a telephone pole or street lamp? I remember hearing this about a different state. It's illegal for a giraffe, but I didn't. It is a giraffe. Do Are giraffes in Georgia? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, in zoos, I would assume. I don't know why this is one. Somebody had a giraffe, tied it to a telephone pole once, and the cops were like, We got to outlaw this. This is not great. That would be kind of cool, though, to see a giraffe tied to a telephone pole on. Safely. (laughs) Safely. And question seven. Sorry, White Castle. In Minnesota, it's illegal to eat what food on Sundays? White Castle? We don't have White Castles here, so this might challenge you a, a little bit. It's illegal to eat what food? Mm Mm-hmm. Meat. The answer is hamburgers. Meat hamburgers. Well, there is meat. There is meat on a hamburger. And White Castles, we don't have one here, so that's a hard one, but they're famous for their hamburger sliders. Okay, Ren, round five. What do you know about natural disasters? Question one. What natural disaster is characterized by the shaking of the Earth's surface due to the movement of tectonic plates? Earthquake. Earthquake! I feel like there was an earthquake somewhere very recently. Earthquakes are dangerous, and I've never been in one, thankfully, but (laughs) yikes, not good. We've been in a tornado, though. We have been in a tornado, that's true. Question two. What is the name for a rotating column of air extending from a thunderstorm to the ground? Tornado is the answer. I'm going to tell a quick story because it's kind of a cool one. When I was in high school, we, we, my high school was built in 1912. So it was super old and it was a three story old building. And what they had done is they had put like a new roof on top of our old roof. So instead of taking the old roof off, they just put a new one on top. There was one day where a tornado came through and we were still in math class on the third floor. We were still in class and it was super windy. And all of a sudden we heard this huge rumbling noise, like a train coming through. And all of a sudden the windows in the room went black. And we were like, what just happened? We all ran to the window and the roof, the new roof had blown off the school and went and was covered, like covered the whole parking lot and all the cars and everything. The entire roof was in the parking lot. We couldn't see sky above us because the old roof was still there, but took out the whole thing. It's crazy. And then we all sprinted down to the library in the basement to be safe because yikes. Question three, what type of natural disaster occurs when a large amount of water quickly fills normally dry land? Tsunami. It is not a tsunami. It is a flood. Oh. A flood. 
We had a flood last summer here. Not like a terrible flood, but we got 10 inches of rain real quick. And we had basements that flooded and it was, it was bad. So we've had them. Question four, what is the name for a fast moving flow of snow down a steep slope? Avalanche. Avalanche. Scary. So they have avalanche like control people in Colorado, like um, on ski slopes and stuff that go and blow up dynamite and cause an avalanche pre like, so it doesn't happen while they're skiers or to try to keep people safe. So they blow up parts of the mountain to make the avalanche come so that it's done before it can harm people. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Question five. What natural disaster is caused by the sudden shifting of a large volume of water in an ocean or other large body of water? Tsunami. Two tsunami. It is a tsunami that starts with a T. What? That's in, that's weird. The word tsunami makes an S sound. It looks like it's two tsunami. Two tsunami. 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 <laughs> like you sneeze. Tsunami. <laughs> Oh, question six. What is the term for the sudden collapse of the Earth's surface into a pit? Caving in. This is called a sinkhole. Yeah, I don't know how a sinkhole works if like part of the Earth's surface just shifts and then makes a hole, but yikes. Question seven. What is the term for a prolonged period of abnormally low rainfall leading to a shortage of water? A drought. A drought. Yeah, that's correct. What um, what time in history was a very severe drought? Do you remember? Like 1973 or something. I was going for the dirty 30s. Like the 1930s during the Dust Bowl when there was no rain. Yeah. Yeah, that was not good. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these answers in the previous rounds, but these are the hardest ones we had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one, what type of animal is a mandrel? One of the most colorful mammals in the world with red and blue skin on its face and backside. Monkey or primate? Question two, how many days are there in a leap year? 366. Question three. What natural disaster is caused by the sudden shifting of a large volume of water in an ocean or other large body of water? Tsunami. Question four. In Kansas, it's illegal to serve ice cream on what flavor of pie? Cherry. Question five. What small amphibian is known for its vibrant and diverse colors? often a sign of being toxic. Poison dart frog. Question six. What is the time of day when the sun is at the highest point in the sky? Noon. Question seven. What is the term for a prolonged period of abnormally low rainfall leading to a shortage of water? A drought. So in that final, They had the words toxic and the answer cherry pie. And I didn't sing about them. That is so hard for me. Those songs are like, I wanted, when I said toxic, I wanted to say, you're toxic, I'm sipping under. And cherry pie, I wanted to say, she's my cherry pie. Okay, I got them out of my system. It's so hard for me to not sing when a song is associated with words. It's like, I have to do it. So, and now here are your shout outs. Chess comes from listener Leo. Thank you, Leo. And Colton. Thank you, Colton. Legos comes from Avery and Opal. Thanks, Avery and Opal. And Louie. He wanted Legos too. Thanks, Louie. Animal Crossing New Horizon comes from Karina. Thank you, Karina. Weird Laws comes from Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. Time or Clocks comes from Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. That was a really good one. Natural Disasters comes from Jane Ellen. Thank you, Jane Ellen. Dangerous Weather comes from Sammy. Hey, thanks, Sammy. Oh, it's time for birthday shout outs. Yeah. Our first birthday shout out comes to listener from to all the things listener McKenna from Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
Thank you, Ken McKenna. And she turns 10 double digits. Our next birthday shout out is to listener Kenley. Kenley is turning nine. Happy birthday, Kenley. Happy birthday, Kenley. Our next shout out goes to listener Cecilia, who turns six. Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. I had to do a song for that one. That's my favorite Simon and Garfunkel song. And our last shout out goes to listener Harper. She turns seven. Happy birthday, Harper. Happy birthday to you guys. To you girls. You yeah. were all girls on this list. Happy birthday to McKenna and Kenley. Your names kind of sound the same. And Cecilia and Harper. Happy birthday to you. McKenna, Kenley, Cecilia, and Harper. Happy birthday. Happy all right. Birthday. And for our conversation starter, what do you want to be when you grow up? An eye doctor. An eye doctor. That's a great answer. If I could redo what I wanted to be when I grow up, well, I would have been a podcaster, but I would have picked a vet. I think, I think that would have been fun. All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you.